Hi guys, today we're going to talk about thesis statements. So I am going to work on the board behind me um, and talk about the gists of what makes a good thesis statement and how to put that introductory point together and then even what your outline should look like. So bear with me, I'm going to try to move the chair out of the way. Okay, so this is the first time I've recorded on here. Okay, so when we're talking about thesis statements, what makes a good thesis statement? In order to truly put together what you're looking for in this final paper, you want to talk about the what. So what point are you trying to prove? And what sources or characters are you focusing on? Okay. Why? Why is your argument unique or relevant? And here, this is the purpose, right? So when I say you're talking about what your point is going to be, what is the purpose of, of why you're writing what you're writing? What, are, what audience are you trying to target? What are you trying to accomplish with your point? Okay, so if we're looking at possibly using um, an idea about, uh, let's see, we're going to talk about evil in literature, right, I'm sorry. So how can we establish that? In this case, I'm going to use the story of, let's say I'll use Les Mis, right? So I'm going to focus on Les Mis, right? And what, how would I create a thesis statement that's talking about the evil in literature or the evil in Les Mis? And so we have to come up with some ideas. What are the actual, how does it, evil manifest itself in that story? So how does evil manifest itself. So evil manifests itself in bread, in silver, and in commodities. Because you have a very, very distinct uh, argument against the rich versus the poor. And the problem is, is the rich are so rich and the poor are so poor that there's no way to help the other. So then how do I actually create a thesis statement from this? So using our earlier example, right, here, so we're talking about the what and the why. You might want to add onto this, you might want to think about adding the who also. Even though we kind of mentioned that before, the who is um, the examples from literature that you are going to use to explain your point, right? Okay. Sorry, that little one on the bottom. Can you explain your point? So then let's think about how we're gonna do this. 
So we had evil literature are the physical, the, the tangible things. Um, so how are we going to create a statement that can encapsulate all of this? So we might say something like, lame is, uses physical items such as bread and wealth to establish the giant gap in human wealth. In France, 1600s. And then you would take that a, a step further, right? So we need to know who we're going to use and why. So Jean Val. Oops, sorry. Jean's struggle to survive against the evil of, what are we going to say there? The evil of. Corruption through wealth becomes a political commentary for the common man. And serves as a manifesto for personal and political change. Okay, so this is part one, and this is part two. Sorry. I know it's kind of hard to read because I've, I've got it. You can see a little bit better here. So we have to. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so we have the what? What are we talking about? We're talking about how the physical items or commodities within this time period become the central focus of evil, like evil in things and the want for things, and then who it actually applies to and why. And then the purpose is to change the world for the better. So we've got all the parts in there and creating a thesis statement. Now this is obviously a two part thesis statement. And as you're writing a longer paper and you're doing a, a, a literature analysis, you're going to have a lot more points to your thesis. So it may not just be able to um, be one sentence. You really may have to focus on the two sentence concept. Now, since we've got all of this idea here, how do we introduce? So how do we create that introductory paragraph as a result from what we've come up with here? So you really want to think about how do we create that um, introduction? And remember, we have the six ways to introduce. You can start with a question. You can start with a definition. You can start with um, revolution. So in this case, we could say that during the 1600s in France, many writers focused on the great disparity between the extremely poor 
and the extremely wealthy. This concept is the central focus of the novel the Myths by Victor Hugo. Hugo's poignant display of ordinary people struggles against evil manifests most acutely or most acutely in the character of Jean Jean. Where do we go from there? And I am using general terms, and I am talking about the display that Victor Hugo writes about as being something that is something we draw attention to, but I'm refraining from doing those gross generalizations about the writers, because even if we say Victor Hugo is a really good writer, which is true, however, that's a matter of opinion, because some people don't like him. He has kind of come under great scrutiny for lots of things, so we want to stick to the facts here, and then how we're going to lead all of this into what we wrote here, right? Um, and then we may need another sentence about Jean Valjean here, um, just explaining exactly about his character. So Jean's struggles from prison to success map how things or physical commodities sorry, commodities determine is success or not only the success but also is humanity and then from here we can go right into this part Langmez uses sorry which we uses uses physical items such as bread and wealth to establish the giant gap in human um, Wealth in the France in the 1600s. Jean Valjean's struggle to survive against the evil corruption through wealth becomes political commentary for the common man and serves as a manifesto for personal and political change. So therefore we have a full discussion of how we are going to start at the beginning from the general and working our way to the very specific point that we're coming to. So then when we look at our outline. What are the points that we're going to be talking about? So we have to look at our thesis statement here. So our first point in our outline is going to be about France, right? So we're going to do a little bit of background information. So our first Roman numeral is the political government history of France in the 1600s, right? Okay. Our second point is going to be how Jean Valjean fits into that category and examples from the story.
Our third point is going to be about the commodities. John's success and downfall. And then four, how his personal struggles become a talking point for the masses. And then you're going to have, whoops, sorry. You're gonna have your conclusion, right? And talk about how you proved all of this. So here's a basic format for your, so then you're gonna give, you know, at least three points underneath each one. You're going to be using, you know, specific ideas and, and uh, research to back this up. And these two cases, these are this is going to come from the primary resource completely. Okay, so this is coming from the story. This one's coming from the story. You're using specific examples from the story. This one is going to be coming from all of that extra research that you're doing about other people's criticisms on the works that tie into this idea. This again is another point of the background information about the author, background information about um, the historical uh, progress or historical um, research that you're doing for your paper. So if you think about the links, because I know sometimes that becomes um, an issue when you're trying to put all this together as a longer paper. And if you can think about it as, you know, one page for intro and thesis, two pages plus per point, right? So we're talking about here, and then probably a page or half a page to one page for conclusion, you're already at 10 pages, right? So you have the one page here, this is one page, one page, then you have two pages, four pages, six pages, eight pages, nine or eight and a half. Okay, so you're already there. So really think about that, even if you would go into, you know, you can even do a page per point, but um, the more that you can flush this out and flesh this out and really talk about your points. Uh, remember, I want it to be your evaluation supported by evidence. The evidence doesn't stand for itself, okay? That you have to be able to put all of that together in, in your interpretation of the text. So this is a close reading. You're really taking whatever piece of literature that you're using and you're really digging in and explaining how you react to the story and what it means to you and why you've picked this point. So that's what we're looking for in this longer piece. Okay, so this is what I want to see for Thursday. You have, and, and then you can even do it this way if it makes more sense for you to hand write it out and you want to look at, you know, you're kind of writing ideas together. Um, you know, here's how you, you have your intro. This is just kind of your concept idea. Here is your thesis statement and then you would have your outline underneath. So we're looking at probably, I would say, two pages for Thursday. I do want you to submit those two pages to um, <clears throat> Blackboard and there will be a space for that. So just to recap today, um, what I'd like to talk about is your thesis statements, right? So we're talking about making sure that you have the what, what point are you trying to prove, what sources or characters are you focusing on, the why, why is your argument unique or relevant, and the who. Examples from literature, who are the examples from literature that you are going to use to explain your ideas, okay? All right, so then we're gonna take that. We're gonna concept map, you know, how we get to that point that you're making. Then you're gonna come up with your thesis. And remember, this is a, a working thesis. So what you start off with today isn't necessarily what you're gonna end up with in the end, all right? And then you're going to 
from this idea, you're going to come up with your introductions. It's going to start from the general, talking about kind of the basic idea, introducing what you're talking about, and then coming into the, the specific purpose. So this sentence will tie directly into the beginning of your thesis. Okay? And this is short. You're probably going to have a little bit more information about that. You're going to have to give, remember to make sure that you're giving a frame of reference to your audience, your readers. Um, also, stay away from those overly generalized statements about this is so and so is the greatest piece of literature in the of its time, blah, blah, blah. Stay away from that stuff. Okay? Then you are going to create your outline of what you're doing. Okay, right? Breaking down your points, and this is just a, a generalization. This is just an idea, um, but you're looking at one page for one to two pages for your intro and thesis, and two pages at least, two pages plus for each point, um, and then at least uh, half a page for your conclusion. And then, of course, you're going to have your MLA citations, the works cited, and all of that afterwards. Um, you may not necessarily have that on Thursday's rough draft because you're just doing the introduction and um, your thesis statement and an outline, but if you want to and you know what sources you want to use in these things, I would go ahead and put it in there. The more work you do up front, the easier it's going to be in the long run uh, when you sit down to actually compose this. And remember, you're going to be composing your second or your first point next week. The week after that, you're going to really try to flesh out this whole paper. Um, so uh, we will be talking about that even further. And keep your questions coming, keep your ideas uh, posting. If there's something that I didn't cover today, please let me know and I will work on it tomorrow. Okay, guys. Let me know if you have questions.